how to evaluate partial discharges. So let me show you the easiest way and let me show you the most common way. So very often partial discharges or the results of a partial discharge measurement are put into some kind of diagrams. And the easiest diagram I know would be the trend. And the trend, very easy, we take this as time and here we're going to use a Q charge, let's say it's in PC, and this is where we're going to see our apparent charge. It's not the real charge, but the apparent charge. If you do not know the difference, there's a video about it. And now let's imagine I'm just putting over a trend over time. So very easy. Let's say I have, um, let's imagine this would be 5 PC over here. And let's say I'm having noise. And now somebody turns on my high voltage source and I'm getting partial discharges. And now somebody turns it off. Very good. Now we turn it on again and we turn it off again. So constantly we would see our, our noise flow here, right? And this would be our partial discharges. And I don't know, let's say this is 100 PC. Congratulations. This is a trend. This can help you. Um, where is it useful? Well, there are certain devices like uh, transformers and uh, sometimes cables where you're actually having a voltage profile where you go up in steps. So sometimes you measure partial discharges here, sometimes you measure partial discharges here. So now let's imagine you're putting this very trend on here. So obviously this is time, even though it's a little bit short. This would be voltage, so the background would be voltage, and now I'm using blue in order to represent charge. So now let's imagine um, this would be, once again, let's say my 5PC, right? And um, now it goes up and it might even go up higher because we have partial discharges that are uh, voltage sensitive. So the more voltage you have, the bigger they are. And then let's say it goes down. So what I was trying to represent here, well, very easy. We had our first voltage level, no PD. Second voltage level, no PD. Third voltage level, no PD, congratulations. Fourth voltage level, bam, we had partial discharges and they were quite high, I don't know. You can always shrink, uh, you can always uh, uh, shrink the scale here, right? But let's say this was, I don't know, 200 picocoulomb. And um, when we went to the next voltage level, it was even higher and then it went down a little bit and then as soon, uh, after a while, uh, when we lowered the voltage, it died down, there's usually hysteresis, so maybe Maybe probably would have been, maybe would have gone down here already, but um, you know, you never know. We're going to get in the nitty gritty in some other time. So this would be a representation on how to have a diagram of partial discharge, a trend. There is one more thing, and most of you probably understand that this is a very useful one as well. Let's say you're doing testing of partial discharges uh, continuously, like monitoring, or once in a while, let's say I'm testing um, um, uh, the first week of the year and then maybe the 10th week of the year and then the 20th and so on and so on. To have a couple of measurements, so like it's intermediate monitoring. Um, and then you, let's say you have, uh, your three, you have three different phases and let's say we have the blue phase and the blue phase does this and you say, oh, okay, look, it's always, well, this, if this is online or this is uh, in the field, it's probably not 5 PC, but it's probably yeah, something like 50 PC because we have a rather high background noise there. So now let's say that uh, my second phase is around the year, right? And let's say this time, let's say this is a, a week or a month. Let's say that's a month. So one month over here. And now let's say I have my, uh, my third phase and this is here. Guess what? It's trending up. Not a good idea. Um, so obviously we just realized that the values we get from our partial discharge measurement, if you plot them over time, we can have an idea on what it means. And first of all, we could um, compare 
different um, different phases with each other. So, so why is it actually higher? You know what? This is not very uncommon. Sometimes you have different phases. They have different kind of um, background noise value, or you have different kinds of divider factors. This is not. They don't have to be exactly at the same point, or they don't have to be exactly at the same point to start with, or they could even be something like this. This is not uncommon either that they're always changing a little bit. However, if you see in the trend that one of them goes up, well, guess what? Um, you might have a problem. And this is the point where you should go for another kind of representation of your, of your values. I mean, yes, you now you could take the device offline, but very often the, the owner will ask, what is the real problem and where is it? Sometimes one thing is more important than the other. So, for example, on cables, very often nobody, a lot of people don't care so much what it is, they only want to know where it is. Whereas, for example, in a transformer, very often the first idea is, okay, what is my problem? Is it, has, do I have a problem with my insulation? Do I have a problem with my bushing? Um, what is it about? And then you might be able to localize it. So, um, what you would do in this point is, you would probably have a PRPD, a phase resolved partial discharge diagram. And in order to explain that, I just have to clean the board. Give me a second. For a phase resolved partial discharge diagram, we need the two information. We need the information of charge and we need the correct information of time. So first of all, if I'm looking at such a diagram, so this would be time. And over here, I'm going to plot my, let's say, 50 or 60 hertz voltage. At least this is supposed to be um, a sinus. And then we do have, this would be our voltage and let's say this is our testing voltage. I don't know how many kV, doesn't really matter. What matters is how a PRPD diagram is going to be built or be made. So we also use the same one over here in order to display charge and let's say we do it in PC. Let's imagine this is zero PC down here and now we can use the scale in different levels. Either we're having a linear scaling or we have a logarithmic scaling, depending on what you like and very often depending on what you are measuring, um, people have a tendency to use the either one or the other one. I somehow have the tendency to use logarithmic view because I can not only see something which is very small, example given one nanocoulomb or less than one nanocoulomb, so I can see the noise flow, but at the same time I will be able to see something that is around let's say 10 or 15 picocoulomb, but I can also see something that is one nanocoulomb. This is only possible if I'm using a logarithmic scaling. So let's say this would be here, would be 10 PC, then this would be 100 PC, and then, then here would be 1000 PC. So now let's imagine I'm having noise and the noise is happening all of the time, very often irrespectively of my, volta of my, of my, of my high volt uh, signal. As you know, it comes from different devices. So let's say, so I have a noise flow here of, um, I don't know, let's say this is around 3 picocoulomb, give or take, it doesn't really matter. So the most important thing now is, let's say I'm measuring a real partial discharge. So let's say there will be, for example, only one partial discharge per cycle. And let's say this is a corona. And the good thing is that the majority of partial discharge phenomena can be distinguished because they're creating different patterns in such a diagram. So let's say I have a corona and let's say that the corona has something around 100 picocoulomb. And let's say it happens exactly at 270 degrees. So what is going to happen? This is around 270 degrees. So I'm going to have one dot. I just had one electric pulse being measured, apparent charge. I did the, I, I did the, uh, the integral of it, right? I estimated the charge or I calculated the charge and I realized, okay, this must be 100 picocoulomb. And now I draw this dot. So now I'm waiting for the next uh, for the next repetition, for the next voltage repetition, so something around 16 or 20 milliseconds later, I'm having another partial discharge, but only one. And let's say this happens here. And this goes on. And the next one is here. And then I have one here. And then I have one here. And here. And here. So what happens is I'm ending up with a lot of 
dots and uh, very often it makes sense to make a measurement not only for half a second or one second. Uh, very often when I train people I said like you, whenever you're doing a measurement you should always try to do more or less the same constant or the same time interval. So for example if I'm doing a report and I'm measuring something, let's say um, a voltage transformer or a cable and I'm measuring multiple of them and I want to do a report and want to have a comparison, it would be clever that all of my PRPD, one of these diagrams, have more or less the same time interval. So my suggestion is usually do a 10 seconds, 30 seconds or one minute. So let's imagine now, let's just imagine this would be 30 seconds and from my idea was that every repetition, right, we had one partial discharge, uh, so that would be something like 1500 dots. Okay, obviously it's not so many. So now I have a pattern and I can say something. Awesome, this could be Corona, example given. Of course, I could have partial discharges which are much, much smaller than the noise, especially if the noise is higher, and then they could probably hide in there. That would be, that would be hard for me to figure out. However, there are some companies offer some kind of tricks, some kind of post-processing in order to try to separate noise from real partial discharges, but that's another topic. So, um, that's pretty much it. So we talked about what a trend is, the easiest diagram, and we talked about what a PRPD diagram is. PRPD diagram is, or some people call it a histogram, is for a certain time you're hitting more or less the record button and every pulse that you're getting will be put in here. It will never look so awesome, maybe in a shielded room, but very often you will have other signals as well. There will be noise signals coming from inside somewhere. By the way, uh, right now I'm using different colors for, um, for, 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 the, for the dots. Um, depending on the company, usually you have black dots or you have blue dots to begin with and then they sometimes turn a different color, but this is something that is uh, special to your uh, testing system, so I don't want to get too deep into that, but your noise will probably not only be a constant noise flow, but all over. So, Thank you very much for watching and there are other videos talking about PRPT patterns and then especially classifying them and you can find them here. Thank you very much, see you soon, bye bye.